Our resident commentator on the passing scene is award-winning author Harlan Ellison. When we call him award-winning, that's an understatement. Harlan has won more awards for his 58 books, more than 1,100 stories, articles, essays, and columns than any other living fantasist. His film criticism has been appearing for the last eight years in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, and like our commentaries here, is called Harlan Ellison's Watching. One of the things that gets me crazy, and it gets every writer crazy, whether they're in this field or any other genre, is getting one of these letters from somebody in East Chitling Switch, Georgia, or some other center of great wisdom, saying, well, I know you're a great writer, and I just love your works, but I can't find any of your books on the newsstand. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why, dummy. You also can't find Joseph Conrad's books, or, or Edith Wharton's books, or Mark Twain's books. That's because this is a market-driven industry. Now, if any part of that phrase confuses you, turn to the person next to you and say, what means that, market-driven? What it means is that the ad men and the marketing people and the advertising people tell you what will go and what will sell and what will not sell. Now, if I have a book come out today, a paperback, and it goes on sale, and they put it in the 7-Eleven spinner racks, right? Now, first of all, the top pockets of those 7-Eleven spinner racks are purchased by the big paperback houses. We're talking pocketbooks, and New American Library, which is Signet Books, and Bantam, and Dell. And that means that if you're in one of the lesser companies, you are stuck in one of the lower pockets. Now, you know yourself, when you go into one of those 7-Elevens or some other fast, uh, fast uh, uh, shopping place, you spin the rack and you look at what you can see. You do not bend down, because if you bend down, 27 people are going to trip over you and dump their, sl their slurpees all over you. So that means that if you've got a book in one of those bottom pockets, forget it. You are necky hokey, no price. You can't sell the book. But let's say that the book does get up into one of those upper pockets. How long does it stay there? What is that? A month? What, you said, what, six weeks? And you, you over there sitting on the sofa stuffing your face with Twinkies. What did you say? What, a week? No. What you've got is four days. Four days before they bring in the next batch of books. In the course of a month, paperback publishers will publish something like 2,000 different titles. Now, that means that the only ones that are going to get really put on the top are Danielle Steele and Stephen King and uh, Louis L'Amour when he was alive and whoever is this, this, this month's flavor of the month, you know, like John Grisham. And that means that everybody else who is called mid-list gets shoved to the bottom. Now, that's the ideal situation. You want to know how long it is in the biggest newsstand in America? First of all, do you know where the biggest newsstand in America is? No. Good guess, but no. I'll tell you where it is. It's at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. They have the largest newsstands in the world there. In those satellites, they sell more paperbacks per annum than entire cities, entire states. And you know how long you've got there to make it? How long do you say? What? One day? Two days? Five days? No. You've got three hours. One day, I was waiting for a plane. I was transferring heaven knows where. And I met the guy who comes around with the little cart. And he's dragging the, uh, the, the slab cart behind him that's got all the boxes of books. And I'm watching him fill the pockets in these newsstands and the different satellites. And I said, how long can you tell when a book sells there? He says, you got three hours. He will load up a pocket. He'll put four of everything. And then he will go away. His rounds around all of the satellites of O'Hare Airport take him three hours. When he comes back, if he put up six copies of my book, and there are four still there, and he put up 13 copies of the Stephen King book, and there's one there, out come my four, and in go 13 more of Stephen's books. Now, that's why you can't find any of my books. I got 59 books. None of them are in print at the moment. And I'm not the only one. 